Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck and today I am doing my February wrap-up. Before I get into the wrap-up, I have two little announcements that I want to make or things that I want to talk about. One is that, yes, I changed my channel name again. It happened a couple of weeks ago and I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that like, yes, that happened. So my channel was Reading to Remember, now it is Badger Reads. The reason that I changed it was because when it had been Reading to Remember, I realized that my channel was really getting buried uh, when you look for it, when you try to search for it in YouTube, it would get buried under videos that were about like how to remember what you read. So I wanted something that people would be able to find me and so I chose Badger Reads which now is much easier to find if anyone happens to be looking for me on YouTube. So that's why that changed. The second thing that I wanted to say is that in February I had a big milestone for my channel which is that I reached 100 subscribers which I was so excited about. I think now when I'm making this video I am over 100 subscribers. I think I'm at like 108 or something like that which is so exciting to me. I am amazed that there are a hundred people who would be willing to like watch my videos and subscribe to my channel and who are interested enough to like watch these videos. So thank you so much to everyone who watches my videos and who subscribes and comments. It's very exciting and I really appreciate all of you. So now I will get into the wrap-up part of this video. In February, it was kind of both a good reading month and a bad reading month for me in that I read quite a few books, but I didn't really love any of those books. So in February, I read nine books, which was quite a few for me, although most of those books were pretty short and at least three of them were books of poetry. So it's not like I was reading huge chunky books, but still, I'm feeling pretty good about the nine, so let's just get into it. The first book that I read in February was Beneath the Sugar Sky by Seanan McGuire. This is the third book in her Wayward Children series, which is about a school for children who have traveled through portals to magical worlds and have now ended up back in our world. This takes place after Every Hearted Doorway. We get to see some familiar faces, catch up with some old characters, and are introduced to some new ones. This one is a bit more of an adventure story than some of the previous ones, and we get to uh, learn more about some of these other magical worlds, which was really fun. I enjoyed this book a lot. Um, my only complaint about it really is kind of what my complaint is with some of her other books in this series is just I think sometimes they're a little heavy-handed with the like moral of the story. Each of her books has kind of a thing that they focus on and I really like that she does a really good job of incorporating um, diversity and talking about it very explicitly, like not trying to be coy about it it or be like subtle about like hinting that these characters are diverse in some way. She just really clearly talks about it and like struggles they may go through or um, kind of like awkward situations they may end up in because of that or you know the kinds of questions people ask or misunderstandings around it. So I really appreciate that that she's like not trying to be coy about it but sometimes I feel like it's a little heavy-handed and like a little like beating you over the head with it. In this one, you know, there are a couple of different things that it covers, but the main issue that she focuses on is the main character who is fat and refers to herself as fat and kind of talks about some of the stigmas and bullying and other issues that this character has gone through or faced because of that. I really liked the way that she incorporated this character into the story and talked about her being a fat character and the air and the issues that she goes through and things like that. That. Overall, I really loved this book and I gave it four stars. The next book that I read was Love and Misadventures by Lang Lee. This is a book of poetry. This is one that I have seen all over the internet, so I thought I'd give it a try in my endeavors to read more poetry. This is one that I actually was not a huge fan of. Um, most of the poems were pretty short, like you can see this one pretty short. Um, a lot of them were rhyming, which I discovered I'm not a huge fan of rhyming in poetry. Most of these are very uh, relationship and kind of love poem focused and they're often very sad. So they're kind of just these like short little sad love poems, which I understand a lot of people like, but I don't think that that's something that I especially want to read. So these ones didn't really resonate with me. I gave this three stars, not because it's not like it's bad poetry, it's just not the kind that I want to read and it just didn't resonate with me. 
Next, I read Ballad by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second book in her Books of Fairy series. The first one is called Lament. This follows two friends. There is Dee, who is a harp player, and then James is her best friend who plays the bagpipes. They are both incredible musicians. In the first book, we find out that being an incredible musician means that fairies are drawn to you because they are drawn to music and to talent. So in this one, they have ended up at a school which was created to help uh, musicians and to protect children who are very good musicians who then would draw the unwanted attentions of the fairies. The first book followed the perspective of Dee and the second book follows the perspective of James. This one I very much enjoyed. I definitely liked this better than the first book in the series. Um, I enjoyed following James and his thoughts. He's kind of a smartass kind of character, but I still enjoyed him. There is a fairy who is essentially trying to make a deal with him. One of those like sell your soul for music success kind of deals where like he'll have a very uh, successful but very short life and he's trying to resist her so throughout the book they kind of get to know each other better and they have some banter and everything as she is trying to convince him to make this deal and he is trying to resist her and also kind of dealing with some other stuff that is going on so I really enjoyed their dynamic I enjoyed watching James and his kind of way of thinking about things so this is not my favorite of Maggie Steve Otter's books but I did enjoy it a lot and I gave it four out of five stars. Next, I read another book of poetry, which was Felicity by Mary Oliver. This is the first book of poetry by Mary Oliver I have ever read, and I really enjoyed it. I want to read more of her books. She tends to do longer poetry, sometimes more nature-focused poetry, and I think some of the poetry that she had also had a lot of undercurrents of, like, uh, principles of mindfulness and things like that that I really enjoyed and I really liked about this and I did enjoy sometimes her like turn of phrase in some of her poetry so I really liked this one I want to read more by her and I gave this one four stars after that, I read Binti the Night Masquerade by Nedia Korfor. This was one of my most highly anticipated reads of the year, and I pre-ordered it, and it came in January, something like that. I was super excited. This is the third and final book in her series of novellas following Binti, who lives in a futuristic Namibia, then goes to an off-world university because she is an amazing mathematician. Then she travels back to Earth to visit her family and other crazy stuff happens. This one follows her as she gets caught in between two warring alien races. Binti is what is called a harmonizer, which means that she is able to create harmony between people and aliens, I guess. Um, and so she gets caught in between these two warring alien races and craziness ensues. This book was actually kind of a disappointment to me. As I said, I was highly anticipating this book and I was very very excited about it. Binti and Binti Home, the first two in this series, were in my top favorite books of 2017. And this one I think was kind of a letdown. A lot of the aspects of Binti and especially Binti Home that I really loved were not present in this book. I think that the plot seemed like it was a little too contrived. There were some decisions that they made or actions that they took that I just thought were completely illogical and didn't make any sense. And so it was very frustrating in that way and it made the storyline seem less realistic. There were some loose ends that were tied up, although I didn't really like the way that they were tied up. I think that some of the answers were too easy or that the answers didn't really make sense or were kind of coming out of left field, so I wasn't a big fan of that. And I felt like the ending was a little too happy-go-lucky for me. I wanted more of a ending that kind of showed the consequences of war, something a little more gritty at the end. Um, and I didn't really get that, and as I said, the things that I loved so much about Binti Home weren't really present in this one, so I just was kind of let down by it. Um, I would still recommend reading the series, especially the first two. I just think this last one was kind of a weak conclusion to the series. And I gave this one three out of five stars. Then I read 
did All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater. This is her newest release. It is a standalone book. Before I really get into this, I do want to acknowledge that there is some controversy around this book over whether it is considered cultural appropriation for two reasons. One is that it follows a family that is Mexican-American and Maggie Stiefvater is not Mexican-American or Latina or anything like that um, and so some people have concern over her representation of the characters in that way and also that this is a magical realism book and is marketed as magical realism which apparently is a genre that um, originated in Latinx culture which I did not know before this so after hearing that I did some research around the topic uh, but still I don't feel like I am uh, well informed enough or have enough experience with this to really speak to those issues or whether it is or is not considered cultural appropriation. Um, so when I'm talking about this book, I will just purely be talking about my experience of reading it. Uh, but I did want to acknowledge that there are those issues concerning this book and that some people have been having that conversation about um, those concerns around this book. So to talk about my experience of reading this book, I did enjoy this one. Again, it was not my favorite of her books. I think the first half was very slow. It has a lot of tangent stories about the family and their history and side characters and backstory and all of this stuff, which I thought was interesting, but we didn't really get to learn anything about the people who were the main characters until like the second half of the book. So I found that just kind of harder to get into because I kind of was like, why are you telling me all of these tangent stories? Once I got into the second half of the book where it focused more directly on the present storyline, I enjoyed it a lot more and I really felt like I couldn't put it down. I had to keep reading and had to know more. Um, I really love the characters as with all of Maggie Stiefvater's books really the characters of the books are her strength the plot line is always like kind of weak she's not the greatest with plots but I don't mind that because I'm a character focused reader I loved her characters I loved both of the main romantic uh, relationships in this story they were both very sweet and I really appreciated that I thought they were very very cute and with this one again Maggie Stiefvater has created a character that I am able to identify with as I have said in previous videos I don't very often identify with characters um, but somehow Maggie Stiefvater has a way of writing characters and experiences that I find very easy to relate to. So I gave this one four out of five stars. After reading All the Crooked Saints, I was in the mood for another contemporary fantasy story. So I picked up The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This was another highly anticipated book for me. This follows Alice and her mother as they are on the run because bad luck just seems to follow them wherever they go. At the beginning of the book, they find out that Alice's estranged grandmother has died. Her grandmother was an author who had a cult following around the fantasy book she wrote called The Hinterland which took place in a fantasy world filled with fairy tales. After they find out that the grandmother has died, Alice's mother disappears. In her quest to find her mother, Alice discovers that the hinterland that her grandmother wrote about may not be as fantasy as she thought it was. So as I said, this was one that I was highly anticipating and again, I have to say it was very disappointing to me. I didn't like the pacing of the book. It was very, very slow. There was very little fantasy or fairy tale in most of the book. It all was in the very last like quarter of the book. I didn't like any of the characters. I couldn't connect to any of them. I didn't find any of them interesting either. And I didn't really like the way that the um, identity of a particular character was handled there is one character who is Jewish and biracial which are two identities that are obviously very influential to you as a whole person and I don't think that uh, those identities were well integrated well thought out or just well done in that character I have a full review for this book uh, that I posted so I will link it down below if you would like to see a non-spoiler review of my thoughts on the Hazelwood I gave this two stars after the Hazelwood, I was feeling like I had been reading 
a lot of very short books and a lot of YA. So I wanted something that was a little more dense and a little bit longer that I could really like sink my teeth into. So I picked up The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is one that I know is very popular. It follows a main character named Kvoth who was an incredible wizard or mage or whatever you call that kind of magic worker. I don't really know what it's called in this world. Um, but he had this incredible life, did these amazing things. He's kind of become this legendary character. And now he's sort of retired at a relatively young age. Then there's someone who comes along and convinces him to tell the story of his life. And that is what this book is. This is him retelling his adventures and the story of his life and exploits. This one I was not a big fan of. I didn't really like Kvoth. I didn't hate him. I just like didn't care at all about him. I thought that he was very boring and very um, flat as a character. He was somebody who is just perfect at everything. He just is too good at things too immediately. He seemed like just kind of a wish fulfillment character, which I'm like, I don't have time for this kind of wish fulfillment nonsense in characters. Um, and I just think that his character beyond him being arrogant and being very good at everything his character was kind of flat to me. I also thought that the love interest in this book was very boring, kind of a ridiculous and again flat character. This book was also kind of a roller coaster for me about like how much I did or did not like it. The first quarter of the book I thought was super boring. The second quarter of the book got more interesting and I was like okay maybe I just got past a rough patch and then the rest of it's gonna be really good. Then the third quarter of the book is very slow, not much happens, and I thought again it was fairly boring to me. And then the last quarter of the book picked up again and was a little more interesting. This is one, I know a lot of people really love it, so like if you loved it, I'm glad that you got enjoyment out of this book, but I did not really like it. This was not one that I found very interesting. I doubt that I'm going to continue this series uh, because these are huge books and I wasn't very invested in it at all. I gave this one 2.5 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I read in February was another book of poetry, which was Dream Work by Mary Oliver. This is the second book of poetry by Mary Oliver I have read because I really liked Felicity. This one I did not like as much as Felicity. I'm not really sure why. The poems just didn't really connect with me as much. So I gave this one three out of five stars. So that is all for my February wrap up. I think for March, I am actually going to kind of take it a little bit easier with my reading. In February I was really trying to see like how much can I read? How many books can I get through? And also since I had quite a few books that I was not a big fan of or were disappointments to me, um, I am starting to feel a little bit burned out and I don't want to like completely burn out on reading and then not read for like months. So in March I am going to continue reading but kind of try and take it a little slower and just read when I feel like it um, and not push myself too hard. I also need to be better at like DNFing books. I really hate to DNF books but I need to get better at it. Let me know what your favorite book that you read in February was. Weirdly enough I think this month Ballad by Maggie Stiefvater was probably my favorite that I read this month um, and that one I wasn't even like blown away. I just did enjoy it start to finish. Um, anyway, so let me know what your favorite book in February was. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!